Hey, good morning, everybody. We're uh, out here at Casita de Copan, and I want to show you the completed project here. We are so excited about the aquaponic system, the greenhouse, the chicken coop over here, the black soldier fly box. So we just got a lot of things to show you. So I'm just going to go ahead and take you on a tour of what we got here. Uh, we'll talk about the greenhouse here in a minute, but go ahead and come on in, and, and uh, I want to show you what we've got here. This is really an impressive system that we've got built here. Uh, this is an aquaponic system that has 14 grow beds uh, that we uh, used out of half barrel systems. And then over off the side here, we got it to where they can actually do seedlings and things like that. So we've got two tables here. And then uh, uh, th these are just minerals we're gonna talk about in a training video that we have uh, that we're gonna be uh, developing. So these are some minerals that we got. But as you can see, we got 14 grow beds uh, and then uh, we've got one fish tank and then the, the uh, filtration system off the side over there. And as you can see, um, all the grow beds are filled with river rock. Um, <clears throat> you know, we're in Honduras, so we're limited on what we can buy and what we can get. So the, all the systems are filled with uh, river rock. We've tested all the river rock. And then every grow bed has a valve uh, that, that we can control the flow of the water in every grow bed. So it's very, very important. That, that, uh, that you can do that. A lot of times people don't put individual valves on the grow beds. Um, and then uh, we, there's two types of systems that you can do. You can do a constant flood or you can do a flood and drain system. We have bell siphons that we installed in, in our systems. And again, in a training video, I will discuss that a lot more so, but we've got bell siphons on every one of our grow beds. And then on our last grow bed over here, uh, we put, um, it's just going to be for duckweed. So this is a constant flood system over here, but this is what will be for our duckweed. Uh, again, I live in Honduras, so it's kind of limited on what we can and get. Can get. I have a supply of duckweed. I know where I can get. But unfortunately, everything here in this country, we have to travel. So, um, so once we get the duckweed, we'll put the duckweed in there. So, like I said, we've got four, uh, you know, 13 grow beds that we're going to actually grow stuff in. But then we got one duckweed grow bed here. And then all the systems um, drain uh, down to the bottom. We drain directly into a sump pit over there, which I'll show you here shortly. Uh, this over here is our, our, uh, our fish tank. And as you can see, there are, maybe you'll see them, maybe you won't, but we have fish in here already. We're cycling the system with fish. You can cycle uh, with fish or without fish, but we're cycling the system with fish. Um, and then uh, as you can see, in the back there, we have our sump pit, and everything's being pumped out of the sump pit. Um, I did this system a little bit differently. Um, I have an actual pump that's pumping uh, the water into the fish tank, and then it is actually um, pumping water into the grow beds as well. A lot of times they do gravitational flow into the grow beds, but this system I did to where the water is actually pumping uh, into the fish tank and into the grow beds as well. And then over here, we have uh, the filtration system. Uh, we got a solids collector and a biofilter. And again, I'm going to discuss all this in a training video that we provide. Um, and then, as you can see, we do aeration in our uh, tanks. Um, it's very important to do aeration uh, because obviously oxygen is extremely important to the fish. And you do not want to limit uh, yourself on uh, oxygen. So, that is basically everything in a nutshell. And then the back, uh, we'll walk around, uh, but there is the salt pit over there. I located that on the outside of the structure. Now, I want to talk to you about the actual greenhouse itself. Uh, this thing really turned out amazing. I'm very, very proud of this. Um, you know, uh, we use shade cloth. Uh, and really, the main thing would be is to limit the amount of sun on the plants. Because here in Honduras, it gets extremely hot. And the sun is a little bit different than what, like, maybe North Americans deal with and stuff like that. And then also, you know, we want to try to keep out as many insects as possible as well. So we, we built this greenhouse um, and we use PVC uh, tubing and then we use the uh, uh, shade cloth to wrap it. And then on each end, we built an actual structure. We welded uh, some metal bars together. We built a structure on each end. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people ask, how did you secure this uh, netting? We use a lot of zip ties, a lot of zip ties. Uh, and then we used tubing and then sometimes in some areas we doubled up the tubing and then we screwed the tubing together. 
Um, and then we use silicone to actually seal all the seams. So it kind of gives it more of a tighter lock onto the, uh, onto the uh, shading cloth. Um, so anyway, as you can see, it, uh, it's just a beautiful structure. Um, and, and it's doing a great job as far as uh, keeping the insects out and stuff like that. And so I'm really, really proud of what we built here. Um, I'm really excited uh, to see uh, Casita de Copan. They're very excited. They, they're going to start planting seeds next week in the, in the trays. And then we're going to start actually putting uh, uh, plants in the system here probably about three weeks. So they're very excited. Uh, they're going to use this as education for the kids. And uh, it's really cool to see the kids come up here. They're always investigating uh, this this. Uh, this aquaponic system, they love it. And then also we got some chicks and chickens over there and stuff. So we're gonna be showing that to you here in a few minutes. I, I just wanna take you on the outside of this structure. And so, uh, like I said, on this structure, we were uh, very, very careful how we built it and designed it. Cause obviously we wanna make sure that the shading cloth doesn't come loose. And uh, this has probably been up for probably about two, two weeks, three weeks. It's done an amazing job. Um, I'm very happy with the silicone, how we use the silicone to actually lock all the seams and stuff like that. And it just seems like it's staying tight. Uh, you know, some of the kids, you know, they pushed on it and stuff. And we, you know, obviously we've ta taught them not to. Uh, but, you know, as you can see, it's still staying very, very tight. So very, very happy the way this, this system uh, turned out. It's very, very solid. Um, you know, it, it, it's not going to go anywhere. And so, and then the shading cloth is a high quality shading cloth to where uh, it's going to last many, many, many years. And then, you know, the main thing is just taking care of it, um, not over stretching it when you put the zip ties on. You know, that's another, another thing. You know, it doesn't have to be like super tight. So uh, that's, uh, that's this right here. And then I'll just take you out back here. This right here is our sump pit. And uh, uh, we'll talk to you more about this in the training video, but this is our sump pit right here. Everything gets drained in the sump pit. And so we even got a cover on it. You know, obviously we don't want critters to fall in there. And then obviously we don't want the children to be falling in there as well. So we got that covered right now. Um, but this is our sump pit area back here. So let's go ahead and go look at the chicken coop in the black soldier fly box. You know, the whole thing that we want is to develop a food source for this uh, children's home, this orphanage. So we built this chicken coop for them as well. Right now we got about uh, six adult chickens in here. And then we've got about 50 baby chickens we just bought. So, uh, and these uh, hens are uh, laying egg hens. So that's what they're doing is they're, they've, they've got these to lay, lay, uh, lay eggs. So what we did is we built this structure in such a way that we wanted to uh, develop it in an L shape so then they can get out of the elements like maybe the sun and stuff like that. So uh, we built it in an L shape, we face the back side to north and then that side is east. So as you can see, um, so you know obviously if the sun's beating in over here, they can uh, go over there and get out of the sun. And then uh, we kind of did an open concept, you know, here in Honduras, it, it does get hot, but uh, uh, you know it doesn't get cold so so basically we did do an open concept you know everything we were concerned about you know we want to protect as far as any animals that come in and stuff like that now you know i know that uh you know in different areas of the country or different areas of the world they kind of have a different methodology or how they uh do chickens and stuff but what we did here is we did five gallon five gallon buckets uh they could uh and then we put wood shavings in there we don't really have straw in this country um, as you know, a lot of a lot of people would use straw. So we use wood shavings for the nesting boxes, and then um, like in the back corner, we got our uh, uh, feeding and we got our water over there. Um, so as you can see, they're kind of uh, getting acclimated together. At first, the the older hens weren't sh too sure of these little chickens, uh, the little baby chickens, but uh, it seems like they're doing a lot better. So some of them are a little ornery. Um, but anyway, this, uh, this chicken coop is really going to be working out really well. We're very happy uh, the way it turned out. Uh, we did a concrete floor, and then they do wood shavings on top of the uh, concrete as well, so they can clean it quickly and keep the chicken coop very clean. So well, I just want to show you the black soldier fly box. Uh, you know, the thing of it is, is 
Um, we, we want to, you know, give them a way that they can uh, develop food source for their, for their animals, like the chickens and then the fish in the uh, aquaponic system. Now the duckweed is one way that you can uh, supplement your fish food, and so that's why we got the duckweed uh, going to be growing in there. But also the black soldier fly box. This right here, um, if you have not done research on black soldier flies, this is really absolutely an incredible way to develop chicken food and fish food. And uh, black soldier fly is basically, it's not a house fly, but it's, they call it black soldier fly. And, um, and what, the, what you do is you want to develop a, an area, uh, put their eggs in, and then they will develop larva, and the larva will actually eat any type of food source that you put in there, like uh, as far as, you know, human food. Uh, table scraps, meat, they'll eat anything as far as in that sense. The only thing they don't really necessarily eat is like cellulose material, like fiber material. So you just want to be very careful. So I just wanted to show you around here real quick. Uh, this black soldier fly box. Okay, this black soldier fly box right here, I just wanted to show you inside. Um, we put some uh, dog food in there. That is one, some people say that's how you attract the black soldier flies. Uh, but we put some uh, dog food in there. We're kind of watching it. Um, you know, you don't want things to get moldy and spoil and things like that. So we may have to remove this. You know, it's about attracting uh, the black soldier fly. But once you attract them, they will just continually come back over and over because of the odors that this black soldier fly box gives. It, it attracts other black soldier fly box or black soldier flies. But the main thing is, is once you get the colony started, you'll have a constant source of black soldier flies coming in here and laying their eggs in this corrugated area and then the eggs and the, or, or, uh, the eggs will, will obviously hatch and then the larva will get inside the actual food. They'll start, uh, they'll start processing the food, they'll start eating the food and then once they mature they'll have a propensity to walk up this ramp and then the main thing is, is, is the larva will fall inside this box right here and then the goal is to have probably around two pounds of free chicken food a day. And then also, you'll develop some compost. It's not going to develop a great amount of compost, but it will develop some compost. So, but we'll go into more detail on our training video as far as on this uh, Black Soldier Black Soldier Fly box. Uh, we'll go into more detail about that. Um, you know, the main thing is is we're going to uh, provide you all the uh, uh, video and an ebook on how to build the aquaponic system, how to build the greenhouse, and how to build the uh, uh, black soldier fly box, and also the uh, chicken coop. We're gonna, uh, everything will be in our ebook, every step-by-step -step process. Um, there will be nothing missing as far as uh, out, of, out of this ebook and out of this, um, uh, and then the designs and then the videos. So you will know step-by-step -step exactly how to do everything that I showed you and that's available on our website. So just check that out. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I get back to you as soon as possible. Um, so, um, you know, I, I'll be glad to answer any questions. So thanks a lot for stopping by and you have a super day.